I'm Paul C. Collins. And I'm David Kelly. And on one of those teams with seven games in the books, including Saguaro High School, the Cougars were hoping to stay unbeaten tonight against mighty South Point Catholic. That's right. Led by a number of college prospects and Southern Arizona's all-time leading rusher, Bajon Robinson, the Lancers were also hoping to stay undefeated, David. That's right, Paul. But don't count out Saguaro's vaunted rushing attack as well. It was our Miranda Pumpkin Patch Game of the Week. Trying to stay unbeaten. How about Jackson Bowling getting the start once again? And Ed Ackerley in the house. He is the T-Boone picking of Saguaro football. Stop stealing that man's mayoral signs, please. Early in the ball game, B. John Robinson needed just 85 yards to become the all-time big school leading rusher. He got 45 on that run right there. Added two more yards for a second touchdown of the game right here. And Dijon and South Point up 14-0 early. Bring out the pink there. Breast Cancer Awareness Month is October. Saguaro putting the ball in the air. How about Devin Robertson, Dimitri Veralis? That's 33 yards. Got the Cougars rolling to the red zone. And then, as we saw last week, and Arizona did a lot of that. The shuttle sweep there. Jordan Button getting it into the score. He fumbled, but it still counts. 14-7 at that point. Now, we might have a game. Bowling going to try to make a statement that he should stay the starter. Getting the ball to Dayhan Chang in space. 40 yards for the DHC. <laughs> Pretty nice. But the fella that they came to see, number five, Bijan Robinson. And here is the run where he steps into history. 37 yards to the doorstep. Almost a touchdown, but no, says the referee. He passes Thomas' Mark Thomas to become the best ever to run the ball at a conference for a school or higher. Congrats to Bijan. South Point Catholic wins their ninth in a row over Sawara. Congrats to Bijan. All right, moving on to Sunnyside where the Blue Devil cheerleaders are sporting pink for cancer awareness. And before the game, parents walked out with pictures of loved ones lost to cancer. Here comes former Arizona football standout Chris Corral right there in the gray who would honor his family members Nina Hickman and Monica Bailey. As for the game itself, on the first offensive play of the game for Sunnyside, quarterback Dion Conde will hit Jose Acosta then. Get out of my way, coach. Can't see. Once it comes into view, Jose Acosta is gone down the sidelines. Just like that, Sunnyside leads 7-0 against Cienega. But back comes the Bobcats. Gabe Levy will take the handoff from Ryan Swoger. And Swoger's got some swag coming right at you. When everything's said and done, that's a first down deep into Sunnyside territory. And a couple of plays later, it looks like a broken play. But Ryan Swoger says, I guess I'll just take it myself. He will hustle his way into the end zone to tie the game 1-1. Pat the chest, oh yeah, in the end, Sienega walks off the field with a victory. Final score, 26 to 14. Can you tie game 1-1? One, one. Everyone knew it was game time over at Catalina Foothills when the fireworks going off. Homecoming, Canyon Del Oro though, started this game off pretty strong. Stevie Rocker, he's back, taking the handoff, breaking one tackle, breaking another. Finishing it off with the spin out of bounds, gets the first down, and then Gavin Davis gets the glory right up the middle. And that's the first score of the game as the Dorados were up at that point by a score of seven to nothing. Gavin Davis far from done, taking another handoff, sliding right off the first and goal into the end zone. Make it two for Gavin. He's not gonna have it a heck of a season. 14 zip at that point. Catalina Foothills trying to retaliate. Will Parker looking for an open receiver. Goes straight ahead up the middle. Gets the Catalina first down, first touchdown, I should say, of the game. And we'll show you that final if we have it. Actually, we don't have a final. So call in and let us know. We'll try to get it to you before this game, before the show is over. Hey, from the foothills to the west side we go as Flowing Wells is hoping to notch its first victory of the season. The Caballeros would host Empire High School. The boys from Vail came into the matchup with only one victory, so obviously both teams took the field with something to prove. And gotta love the passionate crowd at Flowing Wells, always there for the Caballeros through thick and thin. We'd arrive just after an Empire score, and on the ensuing kickoff, Flowing Wells' Giovanni A. Walls is no Nestle Quick, but he is Speedy Gonzalez. Andale, 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 andale. He will take it all the way to the house, but sadly it'll be called back because of a penalty. Tough break for Flowing Wells. Still later, the Caballeros would D it up and force Empire to punt. Then on the punt, it is a fake psych. Cody Pacheco will run his way down the sidelines for the first down. Cody Pacheco forced out of bounds and the Ravens would take a 7-0 lead into the halftime locker room. Last update, it was 10-7.
flowing well. Still looking for that final score. And from the west side, we now turn our way back to the Catalina foothills and the edge of Savino Canyon. Let's send things over to David Kelly and the Sabercats hosted Catalina. I like that. Cody Pacheco, we might have to start calling him the fight doctor. It's been a big rebuilding year for Catalina High School as the Trojans came into this matchup tonight, winless at 0-5. Meanwhile, Sabino looking to take out their frustration on the Trojans after losing a close game to 3A power. Ben Franklin and this evening over at Sabino High School, the grill wasn't the only thing bringing the heat. Man, that looks real good. We start off first quarter, second down and 10. Long bomb, Diego Armijo midair, putting the ball at the 45 yard line. First down and goal to go. And then it's gonna be Aaron Mucklebus. He's able to run it in, putting Sabino up at that point, 19 to nothing. Still first quarter, third down 11. Catalina has the ball, almost intercepted but caught here and ran by Jacob Thomas. Doesn't quite get in. Later, Sabino's Alex Lopez gonna take it to the dance floor like a stag prom goer. Lopez wasn't done. Got the straight crib carry there to the touchdown. Sabino up good at this point and they go on to win big tonight. 61 final. Hey, mixed feelings for Sabino High School Athletic Director Shane Folsom, who was the AD at Catalina High School just a couple years ago. All right, moving on, a congrats is in order to longtime Douglas Dispatch Editor Bruce Wetton at this evening's Douglas Homecoming matchup against Pueblo High School. He'd be honored by the hometown crowd. Wetton was selected this year's Douglas High School Homecoming dedicatee. Wetton was also honored at Thursday's Homecoming Parade. Unfortunately, though, Douglas lost tonight to Pueblo in Cochise County. All right, on to Troy and Mountain View with the Lions coming out strong and right off the bat, Aaron Logsdon for Mountain View is coming through. Thought you knew! Just like that, the boys from the Northwest side take a 7-0 lead and after that, Mountain View with the ball again. And how about Hayden Parson? He's about to get the ball to Collins. Opukapu Apwa. 50 yards later, that's a touchdown. The route is on and Aaron Logsdon is about to say, heck, give me the ball again, my man. This is the icing on the cake. Mountain View wins big. Final score, 56 to zip. Hey, with the victory, Coach Matt Johnson and the Mountain Lions now move to two and four and gear up for a trip to Vail next week to take on Empire High School. Hey, we're far from over with my friends. After the break, we'll have more on the dynamic duo running back for Desert View as the Jaguars knocked off Rincon in a close one. Plus, Ampi and Palo Verde go toe to toe and you don't want to miss the Friday Football Fever play of the night. Nat and more next.